I hope you guys are as excited as I am because the next episode of Last Kingdom starts in three, two, one. <laughs> Guys, guys, the hackers broke into the most dangerous dino habitat. It's not the... Yeah, it is. The Velociraptors have escaped. Yes. We need to go now. Okay, guys, I can track them, but I'm going to need a little bit more information. All right, I got you. The Velociraptor is one of the smartest dinosaurs that ever lived. They're really fast, too. We can't outrun them, not even with the rover. The name Velociraptor means speedy thief. They love to steal what others have, and they're very, very good at being a predator. Then we need to be very careful and catch this thief. Yeah, over. Yeah, over. Get some food ready at the paddock. We're bringing the sneaky boys home. Wait, you guys, they're right there. Come on, we need to get a better view. Let me see the blow dart. I think I got it. Come on, let's go. That was close. Raptors are dangerous. I need a minute. The dart had a tracker on it, so you guys have some time if you want to get some rest. This reminds me of a story. One day, Jesus sends out over 70 preachers and tells them that there is a harvest of people out there, so go and preach to them. They come back and are so excited about all the people that got saved. They told Jesus that even the demons bow to his name. That's when Jesus said something I'll never forget. He says, I saw Satan fall from heaven. I remember reading about that. Most likely, Jesus was talking about the book of Isaiah when he talks about Satan falling. Lucifer had pride in his heart when he sinned, and fell from his place in heaven. That was even before Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. I think I'm starting to understand. In Lucifer's pride and rebellion, he stole something from Adam and Eve. He is a thief that brought chaos and the sin storm to the earth. Because he doesn't want it to be restored to the way it was in the garden. He doesn't want people to know Jesus. But now Satan knows his time is short because of all the signs that are happening. How do you know the signs? Simple. Jesus told his disciples a bunch of signs of his coming and what to look for in Luke 21, Matthew 24, and Mark 13. One of the biggest signs happened in 1948. That was the day the nation of Israel was born. For 2,000 years, the Jews had wandered the earth without a country to call their own. The prophet Isaiah predicted that an entire nation would be born in one day, and it actually happened. So when it came to pass, people that were watching and waiting because they knew the countdown had started. It's not so much a countdown to the end, but a countdown to the beginning. It's when God restores everything that was lost in the garden, just like the Velociraptors. Satan creates chaos so he can have control, but soon that is gonna to come to an end. So just like the Velociraptor, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. That's why Jesus pointed out the signs to us, that Satan's time on earth was coming to an end. He also said that only those looking for the signs would see them. Speaking of signs, the raptors are on the move, but this time toward the compound. That food we put out worked. Looks like we're much smarter than our enemy. Wow, that was awesome. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Yeah, I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you?
Let's run. Shoot. Love him, I love him. 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 I love him. Love him, I love him. I love him. Love him, love him. Love him, love him. Love him, love him. Love him, I love him. You ain't got the money moving by yourself.
go. That was an awesome time of worship. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for Pastor Jessica's message. I can't tell you how glad I am that those raptors went back to their compound. Whew, that could have been bad. Those raptors came to steal some food and destroy other habitats. You know, that reminds me of the prophet Daniel. You remember him, right? Daniel was the guy that was thrown into the lion's den, but God rescued him. Well, here's something you might not know about Daniel. He was really good at interpreting dreams that God had given him. God knew that he could trust Daniel with very special secrets. Remember, God gives us spiritual binoculars to see things that others might not be able to see. Daniel had really good spiritual binoculars and saw a ton of stuff. Sometimes God gives people secrets for the world to know, and then other times he shows us secrets with our spiritual binoculars that are only for us to know. Daniel saw these secrets in his dreams. We call them prophetic dreams. Prophetic is just a big word that means things that haven't happened yet, but are going to happen. God gave Daniel many prophetic dreams. He even interpreted dreams for several different kings. One night though, Daniel had a wild dream. There was this ocean with waves moving back and forth, and this storm came up and the waves got even bigger. Then suddenly out of the sea came four creatures. The first one had the head of a lion. The second one had the head of a bear. And the third one that popped up was the head of a leopard, but it was four heads. Four leopard heads. Finally, when the fourth creature rose up out of the sea, it had ten horns. But then the Ancient of Days, which is another name for God, came forward and sat on his throne and then came the Son of Man, Jesus. That's when Daniel saw in his dream that Jesus was more powerful than them all and easily defeated them. Daniel had this prophetic dream and knew that no matter what kingdom was rising out of the storm, that Jesus, the mighty lion, would easily defeat them. Just like in our last kingdom, Dino Park, where the hackers trying to destroy and steal what we've built, Satan will try to do whatever he can to steal from God. That reminds me of a story. There's a place called the Conservatory Center in Mebane, North Carolina, where they have tons of lions and tigers in cages. When you visit, you get to be really up close to them. One time, I asked a worker if the lions ever roared. The worker looked at the lions and made a sound at them called a chuffle. Can you say the word chuffle? That's your new word for today. All at once, the lions lifted their heads and roared. The sound was so big that I felt the sound waves go through my body and I was completely frozen in place. I couldn't move at all. Did you know that Satan is a copycat? First Peter 5 and 8 says that he'll prowl around like a lion trying to trick you because he wants to take what is God's. But guess what I found out? Something happens to lions when they get old. They start losing their teeth and their muscles get weak. But the one thing they still have is their roar. And even a roar from an old lion can make you freeze just like I froze in my tracks that day. Do you know why Satan is an old lion? Because he doesn't have any teeth. He'd like to make you think he has teeth. He's a liar. That's what he's known for. But really, he just has his big fat mouth and an old roar. When you have Jesus in your heart, then you can rest assured that when that old enemy lion tries to prey on you and tries to attack you and actually try to roar and make you freeze, you can rest easy knowing that the real lion, the lion from the tribe of Judah, Jesus, not only has your back, but he goes in front of you to fight those battles. So we know that like Daniel, we don't have to be afraid for what's coming, the secrets that God reveals to us in our dreams, but we can be happy because we know the real lion, Jesus, is in our hearts. We're going to bow our heads and you're going to repeat after me. Jesus, thank you for today. Help me to not be scared. Help me to have peace and help me to pray for anyone that would ever bully me. Jesus, please give me the gift to dream dreams and to have visions. 
Help me to be like Daniel and be able to hear the secrets that you're trying to tell me. Thank you for today, Jesus. Hide these words in my heart. And now you can open your eyes and say, Amen. Now, if you're watching today for the very first time and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, listen, now's the time. You've heard the story. You might have seen some of the other videos that we've produced. And you're thinking, I might want to know this, Jesus. I think I, think I want to know him. Well, listen, it's really, really easy. You just have to ask him into your heart and mean the words that you say. So if you want to pray this prayer with me and your life be changed right now, today is your moment. So listen, we're all going to pray. And guys, if you've already asked Jesus into your heart, this is your moment to pray for this person to get saved, to become a believer. It's amazing. So if you've already asked Jesus, bow your heads and start praying for this person right now. If you've never said this prayer, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. Please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and help me to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And just like that, you are a believer. I encourage you to get a Bible. If you don't have one, please put something in the comment section or you can even private message me. We will send you a Bible. We suggest that you probably start in the Gospel of John. It's an amazing chapter and it lets you know all about Jesus. And we can't wait to see you next week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, click share, share with your friends. We love you and goodbye. Wow, that was awesome. Now we're gonna have another time of worship, but I encourage you guys to close your eyes and lift your hands and enter into God's presence. Show us your glory Let every burning heart 
Turn.